For this lecture, we're going to talk about tumor location. Uh, we're going to talk about how to describe a tumor as far as where it's located within the bones and why this is important to us. When we talk about tumor location, we describe it in two planes, and those planes are the transverse plane and the longitudinal plane. So what we mean by transverse plane is uh, whether the lesion is centrally located, as in this case, uh, where we see this lesion which is centered uh, in the proximal tibia right here, whether the lesion is eccentrically located, whether it's cortically based, or whether it's juxtacortical. So in this case, again, we have a, a geographic lytic lesion with a narrow zone of transition, non-sclerotic border, which is centered in the proximal tibia, in this case in the metaphysis and into the epiphysis as well. So this is an example of a centrally located lesion. Eccentrically located lesions are just going to be off to one side. So here's an example of an eccentrically located lesion. So uh, right off to one side here in the uh, phalanx, eccentrically located geographic lytic lesion, narrow zone of transition. This one probably has a sclerotic border. Uh, so eccentrically located lesion. Cortically based lesions are lesions that are going to arise from the cortex uh, of the bone. I, I think these can be difficult sometimes to tell if it's a cortically based lesion or whether it's an eccentrically located lesion. Sometimes uh, hard to tell and they may overlap a little bit in appearance. But uh, in this case, uh, this is a good example of a cortically based lesion. This is a lesion that was arising from the cortex of the tibial diaphysis. So geographic lytic lesion, cortically based, narrow zone of transition, sclerotic border. Uh, and this turned out to be a uh, osteofibrous dysplasia, which is uh, a good place for them to occur within the cortex of the bone. Next is juxtacortical. And by juxtacortical, all we, mean, all we really mean is that the tumor is arising uh, next to the cortex. So really the cortex is preserved, the medullary space is preserved, uh, but the cortex is arriving uh, just adjacent to it. Um, things that like to do this are paraosteal or periosteal osteosarcoma, or things like a juxtacortical chondroma. Uh, and as you can see here on the CT scan, this the cortex, which is the uh, thick uh, sclerotic line right here, uh, is really right up next to the tumor. Uh, medullary space does not appear involved on the CT scan. And here we have this dense uh, osteoid matrix in the tumor with a soft tissue component. And this is a classic example of a par osteo osteosarcoma occurring in a juxtacortical location, which is a favorite spot for paraosteal osteo locations to occur right here uh, about the distal femur. All right, so we talked about where lesions occur in the transverse plane, whether they're centrally located, whether they're eccentrically located, whether they're cortically based, or whether they're juxtacortical. Next up, we'll talk about lesions which are located in the longitudinal plane, uh, and by that, really, we just mean whether it's in the epiphysis, the metaphysis, and the diaphysis. Uh, and this helps us because uh, some lesions, for example, a chondroblastoma, as in this case, like to really arise in the epiphysis or occur in the epiphysis. That's where they occur. And when we see an epiphyseal lesion, it helps us to come up with a short differential diagnosis of lesions which will occur in the epiphysis. Other lesions, uh, actually the majority of lesions, tend to occur in the metaphysis and the diaphysis of the uh, lung bone, so that may not help us as much, but um, it's still a good differentiation uh, point for us. So here we have an epiphyseal-based lesion. This one is actually extending into the metaphysis as well, so there can be overlap in these uh, locations. They can be epiphyseal, metaphyseal, metaphyseal, diaphyseal. Um, here we have an eccentrically located lesion, right, here's the epiphysis, metaphysis, eccentrically located within the epiphysis and metaphysis, narrow zone of transition, non-sclerotic border, and this, as I said, was a chondroblastoma arising in the epiphysis of the distal humerus. Uh, chondroblastomas are uh, typical of an epiphyseal-based lesion. Next up is the metaphysis. So, uh, metaphyseal lesions, here we have a uh, geographic lytic lesion, non-sclerotic border, narrow zone of transition, centered, so this lesion is centered uh, in the metaphysis and somewhat of the diaphysis of the proximal femur. Uh, 
uh, and this is a child as we can see. So we have a nice distinction of the epiphysis, here's the physis, the unfused growth plate, and the metaphyseal lesion itself. Note that this one has a uh, fracture through it, right? Here's the pathological fracture, and here's the fragment. So this is a fallen fragment sign, and this is classic uh, pathognomonic for a unicameral or solitary bone cyst, and these tend to be metaphyseal uh, or diaphyseal-based lesions which are centered in, in the lung bones. So uh, classic location and appearance of a unicameral or solitary bone cyst. Next up is diaphysis, uh, so diaphyseal lesions. Uh, this is an example of a diaphyseal lesion. This is a geographic lytic lesion. I would say this one has a wide zone of transition. Uh, there's some periosteal reaction associated with it, and it is centered in the diaphysis of the fibula, so uh, diaphyseal lesion. This one, uh, because of the wide zone of transition and the periosteal reaction, we're going to start worrying about more aggressive things, and this was a metastatic lesion in this case. 